So last time we were speaking to someone who used to do astronomy and left to do data science, um, but data science is also really important inside astronomy. Yeah, astronomers are starting to get these huge data sets, things and new telescopes like the LSST, which will come online and astronomers will be drinking from the fire hose of data. Um, but tech companies like uh, Amazon and Netflix already have had huge amounts of data and have developed lots of cool techniques to find interesting information in those huge data sets. And so our guest today is going to be using these data science and machine learning techniques to analyze large astronomical data sets from the LSST. Um, so I'd like to welcome Dr. Gotham Narayan, who is the Alaska Data Science Fellow at the Space Telescope Science Institute in Baltimore. Hi, Gotham. Hi. Thank you guys for having me. And I'm also very excited to have our extra special guest in the background there, Kepler. He's over there. <laughs> So we started off by saying, you know, these big data sets are coming out. And one of the things that you and, and I, back when I was doing some of this work, specialized in is looking for transients, looking for new things that pop up in the night sky. So just give us a little bit of a flavor of kind of how astronomers have been doing that uh, up until recently. Uh, well, astronomers have been looking for transients so considerably longer than I think most people have appreciated. There are cave petroglyphs going back to 3600 BC depicting new objects in the sky that are really bright around the moon. Uh, Chinese astronomers, for example, recorded supernova 1054 back in the day. Uh, so we've been doing this for thousands and thousands of years, and it's not, it's not really very complicated. You look at the sky over and over again, you see something that wasn't there, that gets brighter with time, and then slowly goes away, and you're like, aha, that is a thing that changed with time. So yeah, we've been doing that. We've been getting better at it, you know, first by eye and then with, with telescopes and digital images. But now we're getting into this, you know, drinking from the fire hose, this huge amount of data. And so, you know, we can't do that anymore with things like LSST or even some of the surveys that are ongoing that you're part of, right? Right. So when people first started doing this in astronomy, they used a device called a blink comparator. They would actually look at two glass plates side by side, blink between them, see what changed. We've now moved to CCD imaging where we can at least take those images and subtract them off from each other. We can still do that at LSST scale. In fact, LSST has a huge group of people, software developers who are building a really enormous pipeline to handle the, the volume of data. So finding transients in the sky from these digital images won't be that bad. But the question is, what are they once you found them? And that is a whole different problem because it used to be when Jeff and I did our data uh, work on a survey called Essence, we would go look at web pages by eye and say, hey, that thing that's changing looks different from this thing that's changing. And this looks vaguely like a supernova. And so we'll go study it some more. Uh, LSST, by contrast, gets you something on the order of 20 to 40 terabytes of data every single night. This is about the digital equivalent of a library of Congress every single night. You cannot be looking through all of that by eye. There's not enough grad students in the universe to do this. So we have to have smarter techniques to do this, and this is where machine learning comes in. So how are you adapting techniques from other fields, including tech companies, to apply to astronomical data? People have been trying to do this since uh, sort of the early 2010s. We started off getting simple machine learning algorithms, pattern recognition algorithms, essentially. And what we would do is describe simple features of the light curve, how quickly it rises, how broad it is, maybe what its colors are. A light curve here being a sort of a measurement of brightness of the object over time. Uh, and so we'd use those descriptive statistics along with a big training sample of things that we knew to essentially teach artificially intelligent algorithms to recognize things over and over. That works reasonably well, uh, but the entire point of all of this investment in machine learning has been that the techniques are now changing so fast. Companies like Google and Amazon, like you heard Jeff say, invest you know, millions and millions of dollars into this. And so the astronomy community can't hope to catch up and, and be on the cutting edge in the same way. So what we're doing is being smart and simply getting people who are not astronomers to teach us how to do this best. Uh, so we're doing a public classification challenge to learn from people who are experts in data science, like Jeff, uh, how best to actually solve our problems in astronomy. We're outsourcing. <laughs> 
So what do you see going forward? Do you see, you know, you said astronomy can't stay at the cutting edge when, you know, these private companies are throwing a lot of money at it, but developing techniques that others can use. Do you see that's the way that the future is that what all missions and, you know, in space and on the ground are going to be in astronomy or, you know, is there room for still, you know, some grad students or undergrads, you know, blinking between a few images here and there? There, there is room, and I think it's going to need some sort of this synthesis of people in the field who have domain knowledge uh, about astronomy with experts from outside the field uh, who have domain knowledge about machine learning. And so this is a project that we've been working on called PLASTIC, uh, which is a really horrible acronym. It sounds for stands for the Photometric LSST Astronomical Time Series Classification Challenge. Jeff, you can put that on your TTA list. That's, um, that's a beautiful one. You know I love acronyms, yeah. Uh, I need a drink for that. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, and so the idea is to create a really large data set of uh, light curves of variables and transient objects. And we're going to put them on a, on a data platform called Kaggle, which Google hosts. Kaggle is going to be a public contest uh, for people who are data scientists to take part in, uh, play with this astronomical data, and see if they can't do better than astronomers. So if people watching this think they can do way better than astronomers and want to contribute an algorithm, how do they get involved? Well, Kaggle's a lovely public platform. So you go on there, you download the data, you uh, write your classifier, and you submit classifications, essentially. Uh, and there's a leaderboard. Uh, your, we submit a metric for how well we want uh, results to be ranked. And you see where you are on your leaderboard. And um, you can form groups with other teams that are doing well. Uh, so you can combine forces. There's a you know chat channel so you can talk to astronomers and try to get some tips about how we think about this problem. Uh, we don't know entirely what sort of submissions we'll get. This is you know new territory for us. People have done things like Galaxy Zoo in the past, where you look at images of galaxies and you ask the public if they can sort of decide whether the galaxy itself is a spiral or an elliptical or whatever of that nature. Um, this is a different thing. We're asking people to submit code and classifications. It's a, it's a bigger ask, uh, but I think it'll be an interesting experiment to see how, how the, the field might go in the future. Yeah, I had no idea you guys were going to put this up as a Kaggle challenge. That's great. I mean, I, you know, interview potential data scientists for my team pretty regularly. And, you know, that's a, a line item on resumes is, you know, I did this Kaggle challenge and was in the top 10 or the top 20. So, like, you know, within the tech industry, that kind of, you know, result is, is definitely, you know, worth something. And it's been an interesting challenge for Kaggle as well, because this data set is not a lot like the data sets they've seen in the past. It's... Uh, it's got all of the problems that we have in astronomy, all of the problems in the universe. It's horribly imbalanced. It's not very representative because the universe doesn't give us every class of objects we'd like to see and the numbers we'd like to see. We've seen one kilonova. You know, how do you make a training sample with one kilonova? I don't know, but you're going to have to figure it out if you want to do the challenge. <laughs> so, you know, it'll be an interesting, it'll be an interesting exercise, I think, for a lot of people. Uh, and we're really excited about it. Well, thank you, Gotham. That was awesome. I'm going to keep an eye out for potential data scientists who have worked on the, uh, you know, LSST and plastic training data on Kaggle. Uh, and, you know, they'll definitely get a few bonus points in my mind if they've played with that or done well on it. Thanks very much for talking to us and great to see Kepler. Cheers. Have a good night. <laughs>